Hi, Myrna. Welcome to worship. Joy is a song that welcomes the dawn, telling the world that the Savior is born. When God is a child, there's joy in our song. The last shall be first, and the weak shall be strong, and none shall Good morning, Reverend Cole here from Selkirk United Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our online service for December 13th, 2020. It is the third Sunday of Advent, this season in which we prepare for the birth of Christ into our hearts, into our lives, into our world. We are celebrating the Sacrament of Communion this morning as well, so I would invite you sometime between now and that part of the service to take a moment and gather some elements for yourself, something to eat, something to drink, and we will share communion together virtually. Our Selkirk United Church is an inclusive, affirming, and welcoming community of faith, seeking God's guidance in helping us become the people we were created to be. This morning we also recognize that we are worshiping on Treaty One land within the homeland of the Métis Nation. Let us prepare our hearts for the birth of the Christ child. During this season of Advent waiting, we wait to light the Christ, the Christ candle until Christmas Eve, but we do begin our service by lighting the rainbow candle, symbolizing that all are welcome. Our first hymn this morning is a Christmas hymn of joy calling us to rejoice, perfect for this third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. It's in Voices United, number 35, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Let's sing it together. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul. Let us bow our heads for an opening prayer. Let us pray. Come with us, God, on this journey of faith as we seek the place of Jesus' birth. 
In our time, too, we need the birth of new ideas in a world of tired people. The birth of new excitement for individuals caught in, in drudgery. The birth of future vision when dull skies cover over our spirits. In this time of worship, we come seeking a new perspective, looking for a new start, and asking for new strength to empower our lives. Help us too, God, to find the joy that you offer to us, for we need it so much these days. We offer our prayers and seek your direction in the name of the Christ child whom we await. Amen. For announcements today, our online discussion group, Sac Religion, is set to meet one more time before Christmas. That's this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m. Newcomers are, again, always welcome. Let me know and I'll send you an invitation and a link to join us by Zoom this week. We're still taking donations in memory of loved ones for our memory tree. If anyone else would like to take part in that, just let Chris know either through email or by leaving a message at the office. The names of those being remembered are shown on the screen at the end of each online Sunday service throughout this season. And thank you for all those who have already made donations. And outreach possibilities. We are still also receiving donations that will be divided between the local food bank and Nova House. Thanks to all those who have donated to those worthy causes so far this season. And last but not least, it is Christmas concert night here at Selkirk United Church, or at least the online version. I'm excited. Some of you have shared your talents with us, and we will be sharing all of those later today. Be watching for that. It should be fun. Thank you to Brenda Chorney today for sharing her musical talent with us. Her solo is coming up later in the service. And we have some celebrations to share today. And while we do that, I want to mention the birthday box, which people have been very generous in donating to and finding ways to donate even during this time of pandemic and church closures. So thank you all for making special donations through the birthday box. Just a reminder that 10% of those donations always goes to support the Mission and Service Fund. So turning to our celebrations this week, Birthdays include Betty Parton, who's celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday, Betty. And Elsie is turning 80 on December 16th. Happy birthday, Elsie. Also, Deborah and Randy Vitt are celebrating their 37th anniversary, also on the 16th of December. Happy, happy anniversary, Deborah and Randy. That's great. And I think that's all I have for today. If you have announcements or celebrations that you'd like to share with the congregation, or prayer requests, send them in by Thursday at noon each week, and we'll get them in time for the next Sunday service. Our children's story today is by Karma Wilson, and it's called Mortimer's Christmas Manger. Enjoy. <laughs> Mortimer's Christmas Manger Mortimer's Christmas Manger by Karma Wilson Illustrated by Jane Chapman In a big house lived a wee mouse named Mortimer. He dwelled in a dark hole under the stairs. Nobody ever noticed little Mortimer, and Mortimer liked it that way. But he didn't like his hole. Too cold! Too cramped, too creepy, squeaked Mortimer. Each day he snuck out and crept about looking for crumbs and tidbits. One day... Mortimer spied something new. What he spied was wonderful. He saw a huge tree covered with twinkling lights. Nestled on top was a bright shining star. But something even better than the tree itself sat next to it on the table. Mortimer sighed with delight. Oh, a house just my size! But the house was so high and Mortimer was so low. I'll climb up the tree, said Mortimer. It made a perfect ladder for a mouse. Up, 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 Mortimer climbed. Down, 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 ornaments crashed. 
Finally, he reached the table. Perfect, said Mortimer. Not cold, not cramped, not creepy. Cozy. But who are you? Mortimer had never seen people so small, almost as small as himself. He had never seen such strange animals either. Tap, tap, tap. Mortimer knocked, but no one answered. Tap, tap, tap. No one moved an inch. I see, Mortimer squeaked. You aren't real, only statues. And so Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged. One by one, he dragged the statues out. When he reached the smallest statue, he saw it was a baby, a baby in a wooden bed just Mortimer's size. There is no room for you here, Mortimer said. Out you go. Then into bed crawled Mortimer. He fell fast asleep in the soft, warm hay. The next day, as Mortimer crept about, he found good things to eat. Cookie crumbs, fruitcake morsels, and spicy peppermint candy. But when Mortimer scampered back up to his new home, the statues were set up again. No, 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 squeaked Mortimer. This won't do. There's no room for me. And so, Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged until all the statues were out. And stay out, he said. Then into bed crawled Mortimer. He fell fast asleep in the soft, warm hay. But each day while Mortimer scurried about, the statues were set up again. And Mortimer always lugged and tugged them back out. Then one day, Mortimer set out and saw the big people gathered around the tree. He couldn't go out there, so he hid among the statues. A man started talking. Mortimer listened, and what he heard was wonderful. Since it is Christmas Eve, I shall tell the Christmas story," said the man. A long time ago, in a little town called Bethlehem, Mortimer heard about people named Joseph and Mary and a bright shining star. He heard about shepherds watching their flocks by night and traveling wise men. The man continued, and there was no room for them in the inn. Then Mortimer heard about a baby. A baby who was born in a stable and had no real bed but slept in a wooden manger, a baby born to save the world, and his name shall be called Jesus," said the man. Mortimer looked at the bright shining star on the tree. He looked at his new home and his new bed. He looked at the statues. Last of all, he looked at the baby. "I see," sighed Mortimer. "You aren't just any statue. You are a statue of Jesus." Mortimer sniffed. Mortimer snuffled. A tear rolled down his furry cheek. There was no room for you in the inn, but I know where there is room, he said. And so, Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged. Soon he dragged all the statues back to where they belonged. Last of all, he laid the baby in the manger. This belongs to you, he said. Mortimer smiled. You look warm and cozy now. There was no place for Mortimer to go except back to the cold, cramped, creepy hole. As Mortimer scuttled down the tree, he said a prayer: "Jesus, you were born to save the world. Perhaps you could also bring me a home." And then Mortimer spied something new. What he spied was wonderful. Mortimer sighed with delight: "A house just my size." There were no statues in sight, and so Mortimer moved right in. Thank you, Jesus," said Mortimer. "You've made room for me too." It is the third the Sunday、end. of Advent, the third Sunday of this waiting season. For two weeks, we have spoken about hope and peace. On this third Sunday, our theme is joy. Joy, really? Can there be any joy in the year? 2020. There is a hymn in Voices United. Joy will come even to the wilderness. 
It may be harder to find some days, some seasons, some years. But it is there. God will find a way to our wilderness. Joy shall come. Today, we light the candles of hope, peace, and joy. May their light help us to find our way. Today's reading is Luke chapter 1, verses 47 to 55. Mary's Song of Praise. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Hear these words of scripture. May the Spirit guide us. That scripture passage is often referred to as Mary's song or the Magnificat. 
Magnificat is a Latin word meaning to magnify. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. I wanted to start with that idea this morning. My soul magnifies the Lord. What does that mean? Mary's soul, Mary's life, our lives, like a magnifying glass, should magnify, make larger and clearer the image of God, the love of God, the hope we find in God. Today is the Advent Sunday of joy, so today we could add joy to that idea. Our lives should magnify, make larger and clearer the joy that we find in being God's people. We should magnify the joy God gives us, making it bigger, spreading it around to all the people in our lives as far and wide as we can. Our world could certainly use some magnified joy these days, don't you think? But is that even possible right now? Can we find any joy these days, any joy at all, that we could magnify? We can't magnify something that isn't there in the first place. I guess it's my job as the minister to say that God is still sending us joy these days and we just have to look for it. Some might say that that's getting to be a harder sell right now, but I still believe it even though some people are really, really having trouble finding that joy, having trouble finding anything good to celebrate or to lift their spirits. And I understand that. And I can commiserate with you if you are one of those who are having a particularly difficult time right now. That's okay. Some days are like that, and some seasons are like that. But not all days, not all seasons. And on the other hand, I am actually one of those annoying people who is actually finding some joy these days. Maybe not as much as usual, but I've been finding it here and there, in bits and pieces. A message from a friend, a Christmas card in the mail, sharing a laugh or a smile or a hug. Oh, and the other day, laughing out loud, watching a video of a little girl helping her dad in the kitchen, helping him add all the ingredients, measure, pour, roll, stir, whisk, setting the timer, looking into the oven. Oh, she was so cute and such a good helper. But the very best part was that every three seconds, her hand grabbed whatever ingredient was nearby and went straight into her mouth with it. Didn't matter what it was, something sweet, something bitter, she couldn't help herself. If it was within reach, it was going down the chute. Salt, cinnamon, sweet potato, orange peel, nutmeg, you couldn't help but laugh. And the faces she made, I challenge you to watch that little one helping and eating and giggling and not find your spirits being lifted, not finding some joy in such a simple thing. In the special service that we had this past Monday, our Coping with Grief service, I told a story about a colleague of mine who lost her partner a few years ago and she wrote about that struggle and the pain of that. But within that struggle, she also wrote and acknowledged that there were moments of joy. She said that joy and sorrow are not opposites. In fact, they are often found together because they spring from our best memories. And often those best memories are of people who are no longer with us. So yes, there is sorrow in that, but there is also joy in those memories. Joy and sorrow are not opposites, she said. In fact, that service on Monday is a very good example of that concept especially the fact that we actually have two names for that service. And we kind of alternate between those two names, and hopefully it's not confusing for people. But sometimes we call it the Coping with Grief service, and other times we call it the Celebration of Life service. Sorrow and joy, grief and celebration. There is still joy, in spite of everything that we're going through right now. Oh, and wait until you see our Sunday school children acting out their parts in our online Christmas pageant that will be shown on Christmas Eve. I challenge you to not find some joy in your heart when you see our own little ones on the screen. I've been sent a few precious sneak peeks, and I can't wait to see the whole thing. I think joy will abound for us, no matter what else is going on in our lives or in the world around us. Joy will find a way. Many found joy in spite of all the difficult circumstances. Sorry, Mary found joy in spite of all the dif difficult circumstances she was facing. 
Mary's words of hope and joy arise in her in that reading we heard a few minutes ago in response to the news that she is about to be the mother of God's chosen one. Mary was a young Jewish woman. Three strikes against her in the power structure of the world around her. Yet here she is proclaiming joy, proclaiming her joy. And in that act, she also teaches all of us to proclaim our joy, to magnify it, so that we too can teach the world about a God whose reign transforms the lives of those who are poor and powerless, hungry and lowly, broken. Find your joy in this season and every season, and like Mary, magnify it so that it brightens the lives of those around you. The title of my reflection this morning, Joy Bits, comes from a meditation that I found a while ago that I'd like to share with you. It is about moving toward joy, and it's based on a couple of different passages of scripture than the one we heard this morning, one from the Psalms and one from Philippians, both about seeking joy and expecting joy and having faith that God will bless you with joy. This was written by Patricia Baker, United Church Diaconal Minister, who at the time of writing was with West Broadway Community Ministry in Winnipeg. And you'll see that she wrote this during a previous, very different kind of Advent Christmas season. But her words still ring true for us, even though this season looks so different than those previous ones. At the end of her reflection, she invites us to take some time in meditation, and I encourage you to take her up on that offer. Her meditation is titled, Moving Toward Joy. She writes, What a wonderful life purpose, moving toward joy. To simply act, speak, live into joyful being. But oh, how very difficult it is. Perhaps we overthink it. It may even seem paradoxical, this concept of moving toward joy, as many of us count down the days of shopping, preparing, organizing, cooking, wrapping, planning holiday events that make up this season of preparation for Christmas. In our scriptures, we can grasp a sense of the awe of joyful living. It seems like when you get it, you really have reached a life state that is completely new, where all that was of concern before just isn't anymore. All the striving for perfection and everyday struggles are met by satisfaction, acceptance, and grace. When we see someone who exudes joy, whose face is serene, who moves with grace and joy, whose very thoughts seem to be joy-filled, we have a couple of choices. We could wonder, are they for real? Or we could wonder, how did they get that way? Or what do they know that we don't know? Every moment has its measure of joy, but these joy bits are often hidden by harsher realities, other priorities, bigger concerns. We often miss the joy bits. It is the not missing that brings those joy exuders their joy. Their joy is in living through and into life's challenges with the hope of peace. Their joy is in steadfast and utter trust in a God of faithful accompaniment and love. And so, what is it that we are to do, to be about, that will allow us to feel, to experience, to imagine, to taste, touch, see, hear, and smell the joy that really, in all honesty and faith, exists all around us? even in the midst of a busy, crowded, sometimes unpleasant, uncaring world. Christ Jesus calls us to live with an open heart, open eyes, an open mind, open hands, to take in all that our world offers, to live all this in love, and to welcome the joy bits as the moments pass. And she ends with this encouragement for taking some time each day to meditate on this idea and to focus on our faith. She says, 
if all you can do is spend three minutes in stillness pretending to be joy-filled, do it. If you can spend five minutes in stillness, then begin to relax your heart and let it be touched by the joy of a memory. If you can spend eight minutes in stillness, begin to imagine the colors of joy, the temperature of joy, the texture of joy. And if you can spend 15 minutes in stillness, rest. Feel yourself cradled by God as a protective parent cradles a young child with nothing to worry about accepting the goodness of God's love and soaking in this joy. When you have finished your meditation, no matter what length it was, write or speak out loud or breathe the word joy. Remember how possible it is to grasp a little joy in each moment. May you find many such moments. Thanks be to God. That was from Patricia Baker. With just under two weeks until Christmas in a time of global pandemic with lots of stories of heartache and loss on the news and all around us, I encourage you to find the joy bits whenever and wherever you can. They are there just as surely as the air you breathe is there. They are gifts from God, sometimes gifts from others. They are moments, they are words, they are people, they are memories. They are so many different things for all of us. Find them. Find your joy. And then, as Mary did, magnify it. Share it for all the world to see. That's how God works. And God is calling on each of us today to be a part of it. May God bless each of you with joy and peace in this Advent season as we await Christmas. Amen. Our next hymn is my favorite Christmas hymn, No Crowded Eastern Street. It talks about how Christmas will still come to us, even though our surroundings and circumstances may be very different from those of the very first Christmas. Christ will still come. Let's sing together, No Crowded Eastern Street. Still to us it 
prayer for our offering. Let us pray. Inspire us, God, to give with joy, encouraging us to give in hope, trusting your presence in our lives. Work through us, God, to transform our communities with your peace. Work in us so that your love shines out in our lives for all those around us to see. We ask you to bless these offerings that have been given and will be continued to be given in the days and weeks to come. Bless us and bless these offerings that they may work for good in your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we continue in prayer with our pastoral prayers. Let us pray. God of mystery and compassion, On this third Sunday of Advent, we approach you with joy. Even though we do not always feel joyous, no matter how we feel, behind the experiences and often tough realities of our lives, we know you are here, Emmanuel, God with us. Because a baby was born long ago, we know that joy will return when it is faint, and that in the meantime, We can feel your care surrounding us when we walk through difficult days. God, sometimes we forget the meaning of this celebration in the excitement of planning and preparing. Remind us to pay attention to your presence in and around us, moment by moment, especially this year when family may not be as close as we would like and there may not be as much preparing. Help us to listen and watch for your message to us today. God, hear now the prayers of our hearts for those we are thinking of, especially at this time of year, our friends and families, and especially those who are going through difficult times. We offer them to you now. We pray for Mandy, Bill, Jim, Betty, Helen, Jeanette, Dawn and Dell, David and Duane, Corey and Fran, Betty and family. Hear our prayers for Jen, Marlene, Richard, Lisa, Shirley, Lori and family, and Helen. Also for Christine, Ron and Dina and Bill, and many others who are in our hearts and minds this day. God, we pray for all of those in need, May your love and our actions in your name be a blessing to all. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now it is time for us to celebrate the sacrament of communion together. To celebrate this sacrament as we prepare for the birth of the baby Jesus, we can't help but think about the adult Jesus at the same time, how he lived, how he brought good news to the outcasts, good news to all people. We can't help but think about what he taught us by his life and through his death and resurrection. Today, as we share this meal together, let us contemplate the manger and the cross and everything in between in the life of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. And let us be moved, even transformed, by this special remembrance of him. Let us ask for God's blessing on all of our communion elements this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, send down your Spirit upon us now, blessing us wherever we are, 
in blessing these gifts that we share together around our various tables and in our homes, that we may be strengthened to bring your healing love to a world in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. Let us partake in this bread for the journey. And the cup of the new covenant shared around the table at the Last Supper that they would remember Jesus always, shared this day that we might remember him not just through Advent and Christmas, but also forever and always. The cup of blessing. Let us drink from it. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God of love, enter our hearts, we pray. We thank you for this sacrament, which brings us closer to Christ Jesus, your Son. May we be transformed through our memory, memory of him. May he continue to touch our lives and to turn us toward justice, toward truth, toward a life that offers hope to all, as he offered hope to all. In his name we ask it. Amen. And now it's time for our United Church Creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. Who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect in creation. To love and serve others. To seek justice and resist evil. To, to proclaim, proclaim Jesus, Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our, our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Smiles like us he knew us 
People of God, as we end this time of worship, may God continue to travel with you, accompanying you on the journey. And may you be blessed by a word of hope, a word of peace, a word of joy, a word from God. God be with you, friends, this day and every day that lies ahead. Amen. flying by so quickly, but certainly I've been enjoying this lovely weather. So back here again with the uh, Outreach Ministry tree. It's looking so beautiful with all these decorations all over it. It's of course in uh, the proceeds are for the Selkirk Food Bank and Nova House. And this week we have received $1,500 in donations. So thank you very much. That's a wonderful way to share yourself in this, uh, this Christmas season. So just to let you know, cumulative, cumulatively, big word, uh, that we received $3,240. So that is really wonderful and will be, will be well used. So I'll say bye for now and I hope you have a wonderful week.